Okay, let's take a look at this operational budget problem where we're asked to calculate the raw material purchases. I'll read it to you. Each gallon of Old Guard popular aftershave lotion requires 2.25 ounces of ocean scent. Budgeted production of Old Guard for the first quarters is, is given in this table. So it's 12, 18, and 13, all in thousands of gallons. So here you see those numbers, 12,000, 18,000, and 13,000 placed here in our little schedule. Okay, then management's policy is to have on hand at the, every, at the end of every quarter enough ocean scent inventory to meet 32% of the next quarter's production needs. And at the beginning of the quarter, 5,500 5, ounces of ocean scent were on hand. So that's the 5,500. Now, I've worked parts of this ahead of time, but I, I, I haven't uh, turned it into black type so you can't see it. Well, here's what we know. We know we've got to figure out what production is, but I'm using this schedule, and this, ske this type of logic gets used in accounting quite often. Here's the logic. Beginning inventory, and this is all in ounces now, plus what we purchased equals what's available, and then we subtract out what we sold, or in this case, we're assuming production equals sales, right? We're only going to make what we're going to sell. We'll get you to ending inventory. Now, I like to lay it out this way, but that means you have to solve it maybe in a different order than just simply going down row by row. Well, here's what we know. We know what production is. The first thing we've got to do is multiply production times 2.25 ounces to figure out what production would be in equivalent ounces of ocean scent. Remember, this production is given in units, and it takes 2.25 ounces per every unit produced. So I've worked this one ahead of time, and all you've got to do is take the value in B20, which is the 12,000 production units for that quarter, times the 2.25 uh, conversion rate of, of units to ounces. Now, once I have that, I can copy that over into the other quarters, and I now know what production will be. Then we've got to, then they tell us you have to have 32% on hand at the end of the period to meet production. Okay, well, let's just plug that in. Okay, so there I take the 40,500 production from the second quarter and I multiply it times 32%. That's my that's how we would follow management's policy here of having 32 percent of production available for the next quarter and then I just have to copy that over and we're doing the same thing now that's the answer those two numbers there I'll bold it are the answers you're looking for but if you wanted to you could complete the rest of the schedule if we know ending inventory in ounces is 12960 and what left was 27,000, then you could work backwards and know that what was available must have been the ending inventory, what was subtract. And this is just, you know, math, right? So that had to have been 39,960. Well, if we had beginning of 5,500 and 39,960 was what was available, then the difference between the two, let me bring that to light now. Okay, just take the formula, 39,960 minus 5,500, must have been what we purchased. Now, the ending inventory will become the next period's beginning inventory, so that becomes that number, and we can copy this over because the 9,360 will carry over. And then you could just completely, you know, work this again. Again, this number here has to be the sum of these two. So we'll take that cell plus that cell knife. I think this is still going to be white, so I'll turn it black and show it to you again. Okay, C25 plus C26, right? And then therefore, this one, we're going to use the same formula here. Take the difference between what was available minus beginning, and that would have been purchases. Okay, so that's an example of how you would complete this table as you go. I hope that was helpful.